to the shack, stay home and craft, or stay happy and craft even. My name is Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK, and, uh, and I hope you're ready to doodle with me. Uh, it's great to have your company. Come on in, the sun is shining here. Oh, I forgot to just check the volume again. Let me just make sure that I'm not too loud. How is everybody? Yeah, it still needs to be brought down a little bit. It's easier if I do it than if you do it. There you go. Sound is nice and clear. Our Paul, our Paul Church is in the building with you. So if you have any questions, then do come in and, uh, and ask him because he's the man with the answers. So how are you all anyway this morning? Monday already again. Where did that weekend go, eh? Because I was on telly on Thursday and Friday. By the time we got home on Friday evening, I was pretty uh, cream crackered, I think the expression is, you know. And so I spent the weekend, I made my mind up, resolution, no work. And, uh, and I stuck with it too. <laughs> so this morning was a bit of a scramble. Because, of course, you can't imagine the amount of stuff that you would take to the TV to do all those hours. And then I've got it all piled up here behind me now. After the shack, I shall, um, I shall put it all away. That's my job. My other resolution is don't just leave it. <laughs> Come on in. It's great to have your company. Um, we're early to the party because, of course, we've got, um, we've got lots of new friends joining us. And they need to find us. So let's have a look. Oh, yeah, I recognise so many names. Where are you all, my friends? You know, the great thing about the shack is that it it casts its net all over the world, you know. And that old bus of ours, it really is quite international, isn't it? Okay? And it's bus number 301 today. You know, at the moment, we're just meeting once uh, a week on a Monday at 10 o'clock, which I think is a really good start to the week. It sure is for me, you know, because it means Monday morning, because the week ahead can often be quite daunting, especially if you don't feel 100%. And all I've got to do is think about the 10 o'clock friends that are coming to hang out with me, you know. Isn't that good? So, um, yeah, that's all I've done this morning figured out where we're going on our bus. <laughs> yeah, works for me. So come on, let's have a look. What were we doing? What were we doing last week? Um, let's let a few friends join us first. We're making that lovely heart, weren't we? Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah, so today we're going to transfer that. And um, and transfer it to other paper. I had a nice idea that I want to share with you later on in the hour. I think you'll enjoy it, especially if you're stampers. You've probably got the stamps I'm going to use. Rebecca Carter, nice to have your company, Rebecca. Nice to have everybody's company. Good morning, Sonia. Hello, Josie, Lorraine, Gillian. I can't see very well because the the screen is so far away. But there we are. Um, Paul's there with you, and. Um, and he's there to keep you company too. And if you have any questions and I can't see them, see Paul texts me and I can read the texts on my phone. So we've got, we've got quite the outfit, quite the setup here. We've got three cameras, one on number one, right, you ready? Then we've got number two, and then we've got number three, right, for the close-ups on the side. And um, and then we've got Paul telling us, he's telling me that the sound is okay or the picture's gone or I need to get my head out of the way. And he can also pass your questions on to me. So feel free. I mean, the thing about the shack is um, we're, we're hanging out together, you know, and it's, it's, there's no pressure, there's no cost, it's free. And... Um, it's just a place to come and hone your skills. We do, don't we? Despite the fact that there's, there's no pressure, it, we just, we doodle along a little bit, you know, 
um, or we don't, it's up to you. But the idea is that I give you something. If you've lost your mojo, for example, I'll give you a little, just a little nudge, little arty simple nudge where you don't need a lot of gear, you just need a pen and a piece of paper, and maybe it will just get your creative juices flowing, you know? But there's no pressure, there's no competition, nobody's watching. The only person under any pressure here is me, and I'm cool with it, you know, because I learned a long time ago that I can't sweat the small stuff. You know, if it if it doesn't work the way I'd like it to, well, there you go. That was then and this is now. Vroom. You know, that's the one thing about live TV that it has taught me. Um, you don't get hung up if if it didn't stamp out perfectly or, you, you know, just you keep going. What is it? It's a piece of paper. Now, if I can get over that on TV, I'm sure you can get over that in the comfort of your own homes. You know, there you go. That's my, that's my m mission is to just uh, chill, you know, just chill. There's got to be some joy in what we do. I was, um, while, while the rest of you are coming in, you know, I was, um, uh, this weekend, I didn't do much. I really didn't, mainly because I just couldn't, you know, like <clears throat> wiped out. And I know, I know enough now to know that I can't push. And so this morning I looked around and the place looks like a bomb, the proverbial bombs it it. And I looked around and it doesn't help when you've got a pair of cats that are just molting like unbelievable. Furball, well, anyway, too much. TMI, as my son would say, <laughs> it doesn't matter, mother. They don't want to know that. Okay, Mark. <laughs> anyway. So we've had a right old hoo-ha with the cats. Uh, and, um, and so, you know, I looked at it and just for a minute, the old Barbara came back, <sighs> you know, oh my God, look at it all. I'm never going to get, what's wrong with me? I can't even make the beds. This is a mess. Look at the ironing pile. <laughs> and then I thought, oh, shut up. That blimmin' head of mine, it will not give me any peace. So I said, back off, I said in no uncertain terms, not to Mark, to my head. I said, I've got friends to see at 10 o'clock. And I cannot, I cannot get caught up in housework, you know, because it, you know what, it's so ungrateful. No sooner have you looked after it and done it, you turn around, you do a 360 degree pirouette, and there it all is again, all the mess, you know. It's a very thankless task, really. I had a friend years ago who, um, she had quite a high profile job, you know, power, power house. She worked, she used to get up at stupid o'clock, sounds like me, <laughs> she used to get up at stupid o'clock and, um, and work in an office, you know, so she didn't even have a creative outlet, there you go, she had no hobbies, nada, no creative uh, outlet at all, she was a numbers accountant. And um, she used to work till six, then she used to go home, and then she used to get the dinner on the table. And I said, well, what do you do after dinner then? Surely you chill or do, you know, what do you do after dinner? She said, I clean, I clean. Her house was like a museum, you know, like spotless. But that was all she did. She worked, she cooked, she cleaned. She worked, she cooked, she cleaned. She worked, she cooked, she cleaned, you know? And she drank like a fish, she drank while she was clean, <laughs> you know? And I thought, that's no life, is it? I mean, you've only got the one life. Why would you work, cook, clean, work, cook, clean? And then you get to the pearly gates and Peter says, so what did you get up to? Well, I worked, cooked and cleaned all my life. Can I go back and have another run at it? Sorry, love. Go on, in you go. <laughs> There's the kitchen. <laughs> There's the hoover. I'm saving Peter now. <laughs> Ah, oh dear, oh dear. So, you got to get your priorities straight, haven't you? Daffodils, that's important. I've got the daffodils in the room for you. Right, come on, enough waffle. I've got 15 units of energy now, and I have to use them wisely. That's how I analogise it. I used to have 30, now I've got 15. Now, what am I going to do? I've only got half as much energy. Got a box clever. Got a box clever. 
And I bet there are loads of you that can relate to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So unit, I'm going to use three units of energy today on you, good people, because I think that is worthwhile, right? Certainly more valuable than hoovering or worrying about the furballs. <laughs> right, come on, let's have a look. What did we do last week? And let's have a catch up. I'm sure there are loads of you in the room now and we can get started. So just to recap, do you remember last week I found a Christmas decoration? I know, it's pathetic, isn't it? I found a Christmas decoration lurking in the living room that hadn't been put away. And then somebody says, bad luck to put it away. So I thought, well, there you go, more bad luck. Oh, no. Right, so we drew this, didn't we? I put a little tissue in it so we could see it because it's see-through. It's very cheap little thing but i liked it i liked it and so what we did was let's see if you can remember we did a three a three-way overlay so the first thing we did was we did the shape didn't we got the shape right oh we got the shape to what we like there you go this looks like it's got <laughs> do you know what if you squint it looks like eyes with really bad eyelashes there you go. Then we put an, another half piece of tracing paper over the top and we introduced the flowers and the leaves, didn't we? And these berries. Okay. Then we put another piece of, so we took two bits of tracing paper, the base plate, if you like. Then we took another piece, cut it in half, half one, half two. And then the other one, we put the back plate back into the front it's called it's like a mechanical overlay back in the day when when i used to do um graphic design graphic illustration when i was teaching myself because i is self-taught you know i did learn this by myself just by asking people who knew you know um but this is a mechanical uh, overlay that's how it works you used to do these um that's how you know when um the the nursery rhyme chart. You remember the nursery rhyme chart that I did? That was my very first project. And that's how I learned to do these overlays. And you just worked on these huge bits of vellum and you do, you kind of put the, the picture down. Then you had to put the letter down behind it. It was a big job. And then the color was on a completely separate overlay. So, so this is what this is all about. And what we're after is this one here. Okay, so we'll take that one off. And that masking tape we can use again and again. Okay. I'm a, I'm a big fan of tracing paper. We used to call it vellum, you know, same thing. This is just, this is a lot cheaper than vellum. And um, it does the job. So, but it's a really good way of getting an overlay without having to keep rubbing out and rubbing out and rubbing out. So now let's just have a look here. What is the kit that I, I is going to use? Well. I need some pencils. I use, we're going to use pencils. I'm a big fan of Faber Castell. Always have been. Always have been. Used to, used to um, live in Germany, was friends with the family. And I think, you know, this is the best, the absolute best quality. Whether it's the colouring pencils, whether it's the polychromos or the Albrecht Dürer, whatever it is, I'm, I'm, I will always put them at the top of the pile. Um, so, so the Faber Castell sketching and drawing pencils are really cool. Um, I've even got Faber Castell eraser pencil. There you go, double ended pink for pencil, white for um, the ink. Although I find often the the white pencil. Look, I've <laughs> got no kidding. Um, yes, I love Faber Castell. Yeah, so the, the sharpener's good too. Let me just, I'm just going to sharpen my, my eraser pencils for the session. Right, yeah, so sometimes the white one works on tracing paper better. So we've got that, that, that. So you don't need much. And to be fair, you know, um, you could do this with any pencil, a bog standard HB pencil, right, honestly. And um, and you just need, if you haven't got the micron pens, don't, don't worry about it. It doesn't exclude you. 
just get a biro, you know, get a biro, get a pen. You don't need, don't think, oh, well, I haven't got the Faber-Castell brand, so that's it, I can't do it. Ah, it's not true, it's an Epavre. Now, the, mar the Micron pens, let's have a look. These are what we're going to use to do the inking. All right, so I've got 005s there and an 01. We've got packs of them, um, but that, all I've got is what I need. Because, <laughs> oh, my stuff. If I drag these big blue bins, these very big blue bins, you'd see that they're still rammed full with all the stuff from Friday. Because, remember... I didn't work at the weekend. <laughs> I can't, don't want to anymore. I've done that so many years, seven days a week. And you know, after a while, it's like the housework. It just gets dull. You know, there's no, there's no joy in it if you just a nose to the grindstone all the time. So I'm not doing it anymore. Don't want to do it anymore. I mean, it's different if you're on the telly on Sunday, but then I've said, right, if I'm on the telly next Sunday, which I am again, right, from three to five, that's fine. I accept that, but that's the way it is. But I'm taking Friday off and I'm going out with my mother. Yes, I am. See, it's got to be a little bit of a give and take here so that the resentment doesn't build up. You understand. It's all down to decisions and choices. Right, so let's have a look. We've got this. We've got our pencils, that's what we need. And now we're going to transfer this, right? So that was the, let's have a think. Uh, that was the, that was the side I drew it on. So now you turn it over and now we're going to transfer it to another piece of paper or card or surface or whatever you want to do. It could be watercolour paper, whatever, right? Thing is though, what you've got to remember, let's have a look. I just used, if you use an HB pencil or whatever pencil you use. I actually used a 2H, which is quite hard, and I may regret it about now, right? Because you may not see what I did very well. But that's easily remedied because you just go back over the lines, don't you? Can you hear me all right? Can you hear me all right? There you go. Look, decide where you want to put it. I'm going to just use stencil card. Yeah, because this is more about the process to me. We know enough to know that we can put this on anything, literally. But I'm going to just make a hinge like that. Now, let's see if this works. Which one am I going to use? I'm going to use 2H again because it's, it's quite a nice sharp one. See, what I may have to do, let's see, look, we well, don't, don't preempt it, Gray. <laughs> you don't know that it hasn't worked yet. Right, let's have a look. Let's come in a little bit closer. Let's come in a bit closer. Right, now we're walking. Okay. Paul, is everything all right? I wish we were all together. Like, I know it'd be really loud. But it would be great, wouldn't it? Now, let's see if this is going to work. Settle down, Barbara. Yeah, that's good enough. Um, you know, yeah, when I say I wish we were all, to, oh, hang on just a bit. I wish we were all together. I really do. That'll do. And, um, and on that note, I want to talk to you about the open days. Has anyone got their tickets yet? So the open days are a big thing for clarity big thing for clarity like the highlight of the clarity year really and um so what we're doing here let me show you we're we're just trying way sorry about that whoa like i'm just transferring the lines see so that will be and it's not too heavy which is a good thing that was why i used the um the 2H because I wanted it to be subtle. Um, right, so we're just going over the line. See, 2H, H is hard for the uninitiated. H stands for hard. Look, 
You see, I did a bit of pottery yesterday. Look, the nails are on the way out. <laughs> All right, let's use a good one. H is for hard, and then B is for black. So the B for black pencils, the softer, the higher the number, like 4B, 6B. 6B is much softer again than 2B. And 5H is very hard, like very hard. And 2H is, I like 2H, it's, it doesn't smear. See, when you draw with it, you don't get loads of black on your hands. Now, and you can still see where you've been and where you haven't been. Um, so, so you just work your way around and move your artwork around. If you're, if you find that the pencil you're using is is smearing, you know, like, then you can use, let's have a look, I usually got just a bit of copy, anything, anything to lean on, a bit of copy paper. I mean, if this, if I was in selling mode, I'd say, right, you need a, a guard, right, so you can lean on one of our groovy guards, see, and then that way, but you can even go through the hole. But to be fair, you can use a, a piece of copy paper with a hole in it if you feel inclined. Right. This is good, though, because it, it holds everything down as well while you're working. Right. Yeah, so the open days, here we go. This is actually really good because I can see I'm working on this area now that's exposed. See what I mean? Open days. What are the dates? I think they're like the 9th and 10th of June. And they're in Ditton, which is near Maidstone. It's quite the event. Um, it's, it is literally a celebration of all things clarity. I think this year is going to be extra special. Well, I don't think. I know. <laughs> because um, it's 30 years. We've kept going for 30 years. That's quite something, um, even if I say so myself. And um, so, and I don't think we've ever been better. I think, you know, so we're going to celebrate. And and the, the idea is that people come for the day or for two days. Lots of people come from further afield and they, um, they make a, a little mini break of it, you know. A lot of people bring their caravans, you know, and they, because this is a nice part of the world, actually. And the husbands go off, they go to the Bluebell Railway, or they go down to Rye, and they do their outings, and the girls stick uh, close to Ditton. And, and what's going on? Well, we've got pretty much we've got the best in the business really um demonstrations we've got something for everyone so so obviously paul and i <laughs> we're going to be there and um and jane telford she's there and uh sam crow coming all the way from The Northeast, uh, Eileen Godwin this year. I'm hoping that Dee Paramore is going to be able to come. Um, Leone, there you go. Uh, Tina, Tina Cox, brilliant. So she's going to be giving us lots of ideas. Let's have a look how this is going. Um, then we've got Sonia and Tina Morris, Sonia Goodliffe and Tina Morris. They're going to be doing the make and takes. Um, Hazel Edwards is doing the groovy make and takes. There you go. So you can see there's a, there's a real hive of activity at the open days. There's, there's a big shopping opportunity all the way around the outside. So it takes us a day just to set the, all everything up, really. So you've got make and takes, you've got shop, you've got... Um, oh, and then when you come in, because it costs eight pound a ticket for the day, and when you come in, we'll give you a a, a raffle ticket, um, 
and that raffle ticket is good for the day. So every hour on the hour, I jump up on a chair <laughs> and, and I call a number. There you go. This is pretty good, you know. And I call a number. And then um, the prizes are pretty spectacular. Usually 80 to 100 pounds worth every hour on the hour. I'm thinking this year that we will do something else as well, just because we can, you know. And and we I really this year of all years, I, I'm so I'm so glad that, that I'm here. <laughs> I can't can't think of another way of putting it really. I'm so grateful to be here, people. Right. You just don't know what's up the road, do you? See, and then and then these bits, those bits, I could put them in afterwards. I, I, I can do them. I don't need a guide to do that, do I? There. Yeah, so the open days are on the 9th and 10th. And and the tickets, Paul, Paul, you I bet you put the tickets up, haven't you? Yeah. And if you want to know, this is the thing you see, if you want to know um, how to get there, loads of people in the shack will be there. And Janine, uh, if you want to, hotels, if you want to know where people are staying, you know, there are loads of hotels in that area because it's near Aylesford, near the Priors. Another lovely day out, you know. Uh, Aylesford and Ditton, they're kind of next to each other. And it's right on the M20 so it's real close to the motorway. Um, it's a huge hall. The parking is, I remember the first time I went there, it was the International WI um, meeting, you know? And, and I thought, what an obscure little place for the International WI. And then when I got there, I completely understood why they selected that hall. You know, the parking alone is just fantastic. And the staff there are so lovely, you know. Nothing's, just nothing's too much trouble, you know. Oh, and then there are sandwiches. We, It's a team effort. And the girls make lunches for you. Um, we don't make money on that. It's just all at cost. So, um, so have a look, you know. Join us. It will be fun. I know that, guaranteed. And my mum will be there too. You know, which I'm glad about. She she's got something to look forward to, you know. And I think that's the thing about the open days. It's something to look forward to. Pat Hoskins, I hope that you can come. Now, if Pat can come all the way from, she can make it all the way from Cornwall, friends. And you know, there you go, Pat. Are you going to be there? I know Ken will be there. I bet Nahid is going to be there. I'm looking here. Yeah. Book the time off work. Make it happen because. Um, it's only once a year, it's like Christmas. <laughs> right, so we've got that. Let's have a look. We've taken that off. You see, now the thing about this is I can use it again and again and again. Next time I'll flip it and then I'll transfer the ink or the pen, the lead that I just used. And then I'll use it again and I'll use it again and again. I want to show you, so we've just transferred it onto here. I want to show you one that I was working on early this morning before you got here. And it's not quite finished, but I, I, I want to show it to you so that you can see if you change the background. Let's have a look. This is just a couple of steps ahead, but the background. So you have to work your way back on this. See, I really like that. I really like that to get, you see, now what, what I've done here so I was looking at the, the heart, and this is pure coincidence because this is such a mess in here, right? And this was sitting to my side. And I thought, ah, now that looks like the right shape. Okay, see, like that. This is a backdrop stamp. It's a small heart backdrop stamp. And this just happened to be sitting as a scrap. And I thought, that would work. That would look really nice. Let's change the colour. So then I went. So if you, do you know what the backdrop stamps are? Hang on, I don't want to lose that because that's my, 
that's my template that's my template i'm just going to pop that there and i'm just going to divert the bus has gone on a little diversion now okay <laughs> all right <laughs> diversion turn left okay so what we've got here let me just show you these are these backdrop stamps they're very popular and they give you like this instant background right we've got little ones and large ones see now here's the thing got different shapes so your ovals your squares let me just take this heart one and i'm going to do it because there are several people i'm sure most of you will have this and a lot of you will be stampers so this will make complete sense to you but i'm going to show you i'm going to show those of you who aren't stampers who don't know how this would work right and actually there's no harm in having a little recap so it's about the background okay it's dead easy this is but it what a difference that makes doesn't it yeah and I just, but the thing is, you've got to work your way backwards because in order for this to work, now where's the, so this comes off here, right? Let's just say you've got this or you've got the oval or you've got the square and you want to draw into it like this. So, so you've got your heart, right? But the first thing you've got to do is take your tracing paper, okay, and make sure that your heart shape is the right shape so you can use the template here do you see what i mean mine just happened to fit look good enough but there's your heart template already ready for you so that would be your outside your base plate you see and then you know it's going to sit on there lovely so that's the first thing is figure out the heart shape then the next thing is if we take this so i'm going to use distress oxide so i want the sort of blistery look see the the background yeah right so I, <laughs> these two happen to be on the table <laughs> right spot on sponges i'm going to use that one and see if i've got a blue one waste not want not mm -hmm. there you go blue and pink that'll do right we don't want it too dark so put a little bit on there like that and a little bit on there like that and then we can just so we don't want too much and you know what it's all right if there's a little bit of white don't it doesn't matter it's just to get the background get the color going right so that's that one and i'm just using the spot on sponges right they're like makeup sponges they're really cool look but because they're polyurethane they don't crumble. They're good for makeup as well. Right, so here we go, look. So we're just dabbing this around like that. Just want to show you how to get the background because the rest is obvious because we've just done it on white paper. But what I'm saying is you could go, that'll look good. Right, lid on. It's good enough. Now you don't have to spritz it with water, but the distress, distress oxides, that's what they're good for, right? Is this all right, doing a little diversion like this? I think so, don't you? Come on. Make use of what you've got here. Eh? Right, a bit of water. And then what we'll do is we'll just spritz it. Not too much. <laughs> it's so bad. There's this little monkey in my head that goes, go on, one more time, one more time, one more time. And that was my problem when I drank. Go on, one more, one more. You can do it, you can do it. Right, so spritz. There you go. And then if you want to, let me just show you. You want to press, right, just something flat like that. In, in lino cutting world, this is called a baron. In my world, it's called a little pot that Pete made me, <laughs> Glynis's Pete, so that I don't turn the ink upside down on myself. Right, but you just need something flat, basically. Okay, so you do that, and you'll notice that I left it on the on the acetate that it comes on. I think that's useful. Right, and then when you lift this off, perfect. Look at that, boom. Right now, when that's dry, then you transfer it like that, and then you've got your 
you've got your pencil then. What we've done here, you've got on there. And then, perfect, right? When that's dry, this is going to be lovely. And you can see, right, with the shadow, this is the, the what really made the difference. And I just did a couple of the flowers. And then I thought, cool, look at that. What a difference that makes. A little white bit of white pen on the on the flower. Just make sure it doesn't blob. All right. These white Posca pens. So you just put a little tiny bit of white where the this is after you've done all your shading. When you when you think, right, I've really done enough now, right? Then you can use your white Posca pen just where you think you're going to add a little bit of white. Okay. Like that. It's enough to make a difference. Look. See? Just a little flash like that. So that's worth thinking about. Right, and this is the sort of thing, this is the kind of thing that the girls do at the open days they bring a technique they bring they bring something special and then they show you you know um and you sit and watch and and there are about six eight nine probably ten demos going on all around the room so that's got to be worth two days really so there you go that's just to show you it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a detour but I thought I'd get that in now before we just go back to our, our inking, right? So there's a little technique. It's nice, it's nice, yeah? And we're doing it on white. So exactly what we do here is what I did on there, all right? Good. Well, that's sorted. And, and these, they wash up lovely. You can just wipe them with a cloth, with a mic you know with a with a or a paper towel and um they're good to go or you leave it and then when you do it the next time a hint of pink and a hint of blue will come through okay right back to that where's my right now we need our pens so you need a bit of scrap, where's that piece of scrap? just to check all right it's a good idea so you want to go one micron pen number one that's it you don't have to press hard with these either okay you literally just pull them if you press too hard you'll spoil the nib if the nib feels like you've crunched it do this just twizzle it like that and it will come back for you okay and now we're going to add the ink that's the next stage we've done the pencil and now we're doing the ink. Is that good? Right. So let's have a look. And we'll start. See, okay, here we go. So you just start inking your work. And you'll find when you're when you're inking right it's it requires quite a bit of focus because you have to concentrate and you need a steady hand but the other thing is right let me tell you something when you when you're doing this okay you keep your eye on the road ahead okay we've talked about this in the shack before the trick is to stay right here we go on the road ahead so what i find is if i if i look at the nib when i'm doing this i wobble but if I look where I'm going rather than where I'm at, if that makes sense, then I get a much smoother, you watch, I'm just looking. I'm about, 
I'm about that much further, it was my eye, I'm about that much further ahead than where the nib is. Okay. And it really does work. I remember when I was, I, 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 I haven't ridden a motorbike for years, but I, I did have a motorbike and I did have a Harley Davidson. Sold it now because I just, I didn't see the point anymore when I hit 60. Um, but I remember when I used to ride my bike, and if I, when I was learning, if I, if I looked at the wheel, the front of the, when we were going along, you'd go like that, right? You, if you were looking at the wheel, you were all over the place. But if you looked ahead like that, you'd be as straight as a rod. You would, you would not deviate. You didn't wobble. You only wobbled when you brought your eyes down to where you were and then you'd be like all over the place which wasn't a good place to be so and it's the same it's the kind of the same analogy if you if you just keep your eye on the road ahead you'll find that you're you, you won't have a wobbly hand the wobbly hand comes unless you've got shakes which you know even that though when you're focused sometimes something like this can really help it um but what i find is if you look at where you're going rather than where you are, it really helps. So, and do you know what? Here's the other thing. If it is a bit wobbly, do you know what? Are you worried? Look, do you think it's going to show? <laughs> and if it gets a bit wobbly, just put a little leaf there. There's a couple of these leaves, right, which weren't on the original one. It was because I got a bit, I went a bit here, a bit woo, so I put a leaf there that covers up a host of sins. Where there was a join that I didn't like, I put a leaf. Okay. Don't sweat the small stuff. And don't compare your work with anybody else's. It's yours. I, 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 um, I do think that comparison is the robber of joy, you know. If you if you always compare your work with other people's or what you look like with other people or what your house is like with other people's houses or whatever, your garden, your, you know, if you compare what you have got or what you have done or with with anybody else right it just takes it takes away the joy of what you have and what what you've achieved it, it what other people do doesn't matter does it and one thing i have learned you know all the glitters is not gold you know i'm not talking about artwork now but you know, sometimes you you sort of you see other people and you think, oh, they you know they they live in a beautiful house and they've got a swimming pool and, and you know what they are not well. They they and no amount of money. They, maybe they're ill, you know, but no amount of money will give them their health back. It really doesn't. It's um, It doesn't matter. All the money in the world. There was a really nice lady that lived around local to us, really. Um, you probably read about it in the news. Jacqueline Gold, nice woman. Dave's Laura used to work for her as well. Used to babysit, so she was a personal friend of the family. Oh, my eyes are... And um, and she died. She's a Jacqueline Gold was the the founder of uh, Anne Summers. You know Anne Summers, all the raunchy stuff on TV. Smashing woman, real powerhouse of a of a businesswoman as well. You know. And um, and she died a couple of weeks ago. Sixty two years old, cancer. You know. She's got a fantastic spread, the house, you know, 
mansion over near where Laura lives. And um, oh, I was, I've thought about her a lot the last couple of weeks. I thought, what a what a sad seven years she battled cancer. Well, it got her in the end. And you just think, yeah, all that wealth, all that success. And I just hope that her kids are all right, you know, and her husband. Yeah. Sad. But the point I'm making is, and, I, and I'm waffling, I suppose, but never compare what you've got with anybody else's or never compare your art with anybody else's. Enjoy what you do. Enjoy what you have. Be grateful. You know? That's my thoughts on it anyway. And um, I get caught doing that. Well, not much anymore. I'm, I learned. But I used to. I used to. I used to think, oh, wish I lived in that house. Cool. Oh, wish I drove that car. <laughs> cool. And now I think now, I don't think. I just think, oh, that's a nice car. Oh, that's a nice house. That's it. It's not important. You can't take it with you. There. This is quite good, isn't it? So what am I doing here now? Let's have a look. So who's crafting along with me? Okay. Who's doodling along? Who's just watching? Hmm. Who's just drinking coffee and thinking, I'll have a go at this later. Now, what have I done here? Let's have a look. What am I doing here? I think that one needs a, that's a berry that needs a, a hook. That's quite good. Happy with that? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Do we need any leaves anywhere just to kind of balance it out? I think we could do with something here. Okay. We could go outside a bit too. There's no rule that says you have to stay inside, is there? No. Quite nice. We jump out a bit. Gives it a bit more personality. <laughs> hey. There you go. Who says? Pretty. Mm -hmm. That'll do. Right, inked up, sorted. And that, my friends, is actually no different to that. Look, before and after. It's the same heart. Yeah, cool. So the next thing we want to do, have you caught up with me? So the next thing we want to do is shade it. See, and this is why I really thought that having a backdrop, having an inky background that actually just was the same shape, it, it really, it's very forgiving, very forgiving working like this, yeah? But of course, you could take a pink pencil, couldn't you? You could take a watercolour, you know, like I did on the telly with the mix mat, and you could get a pink pencil and you could go, because these... Um, Pens are waterproof, that's easy too. Now, let's have a look. So these are the pencils, the 12 polychromos that, that well, we've got the big tins of them as well on the, on the website. We've got pergoliners, you know that too. You, any color in, need color in pencils, right? These are great. These are the ones with the watercolor and the, the only, the only thing about pergoliners is there's no greys and you want your greys to do the shading, right? So let's have a look now. We're just going to stick to the shading. If I take, so in this, this one here, this is what we've used in the shack for a long time, yeah? And the, um, I'm going to take the lighter one. There's a lighter one than that, actually, but I'll, is that lighter? Let's have a look. That's lighter. Yeah, 
Let's use the lighter one. When I was working on this, the lighter one hardly showed. But now I think we could get away with doing the lighter one. So, so let me just show you what we're going to do. We're going to drop. What you want to do is get a bit of a chisel going. So in other words, it's like flat here. And then we're going to make, we're going to do drop a drop shadow underneath. So we're going to put gray there. And then so you go in on the pencil line, on the ink line, and then you, you go in like that, and then you pull it out. Right, so we're going to go in like this. We're just going to add shadow now to make it dimension. So we'll start on the inside like that. And because it's a light gray, see, so you go in and then you, if you want to get tighter, you just swivel the pencil around where it's, it's got not, not the flat side, right? So you get a really nice graduation. So here again, go in like that. And then you drag out in like that and drag. So just do a little bit at the top. I'll show you a couple of tricks. So you go in like that and drag. See how it's starting to change already? I don't know. Should I come in a bit closer? You might see it. You can see an owl in my artwork. Well, where? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Is that his nose? Is that his nose? <laughs> Beak. <laughs> Is that where we're looking? There's the eyes and there's the beak. Did you see um, David Attenborough last night? That owl. I tell you what, you wouldn't want to meet him in an alley. When he turns round, oh, those eyes. <laughs> and the poor little vole. I was like, don't get the vole. He's got six children to feed. And Dave's going, it's a rodent. I said, it's still children. <laughs> I never thought I'd watch David Attenborough be going, I can't watch. <laughs> and when the golden eagle kicks in, it's like, oh, run for the hills. Those little wabbits. I know, brilliant series though, eh? <laughs> Yeah. What's it called? Wild Isles. The leaf is the beak. Yeah, exactly. Right, back in here. And then I'll show you what to do with the leaves. So you see you cut in and I'm on the underskirt all the time. So in other words, I'm pretending that the light source is here, let's say. OK. So the, the shadow is always on this side here. See, like that. On the unders carriage there and round here and then it starts to make sense and with the light pencil like this so you go in and then you just shatter it a bit if you like so you go like that and then you shatter it i'll tell you what good news oh yeah woohoo right you know the blending pens it's been so long these ones yeah, in production, in production, in this country, because we got um, let down. Need to say something else. We got let down by the Dutch manufacturers right in the middle of lockdown. So we've actually relocated the entire manufacturing process to about an hour away from where we are. We've looked at the prototypes, happy, happy days. We're back in business with Pergamano. And the very first things that we want to, um, that we're running through is the, um, the blending pens. We got the, we never ran out of the nibs. It was the handles that we ran out of. So the handles were, are the same ones for um, the, um, the calligraphy, what do we call them, the mapping pens. So the first thing, because we've been out of these for so long now, but you know what? Where's that sign? It is what it is. You know, just got to be grateful for what we have got, you know. And, um, yeah, so the good news is that the blending pens are coming back in. Be a couple of weeks. Result. That's down to Dave. Tenacious Dave. He's been plugging away. 
I think that's the other thing, you know, with the, it just occurred to me as well. You know, so often we, we, we say, oh, I haven't done this and I haven't done that. I caught Dave doing it the other day. He said, oh, I haven't, I haven't done this and I haven't done that and I haven't done the gate and I haven't done the, because he's been so busy at work relocating a factory. I haven't done this and I haven't sorted out the gutters and I haven't, 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 haven't. I said, Dave, just a minute. What I ha let's, instead of looking at what you haven't done, should we have a look at what you have done? You know, don't, don't beat yourself up over what you haven't done. Make a list of what you have done. And I guess I should do the same thing, really. You know, don't worry about what you haven't done. Now, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the leaves, because this is pretty cool. So the leaves, you've got to go light, dark, light, dark. You've got four lines. You've got one there, one there, and one there. Three lines, right? So you've got the lights hitting that bit, so then it will get dark in there. Right, let's get dark in there. Let's just do this one leaf. Right, so now on the other side of that, it's light again. So it's light, dark, light, and then dark on, on the inside of that edge. Right, so now let's have a look if we get some shadow going. Let's just focus on this one leaf, and then we'll have a go at another leaf. Right, light, dark, light, dark. Now let's take a darker grey. Oh, look. Take a darker grey. And let's see if we get closer to the edge now. We've got light, dark, light, dark. See the, see the perspective? Let's take this one. Light, dark. Right, so the shadow goes in on that side of the line there, and it goes in on that side there. Right, light, dark, light, dark. So you've got light, dark, light, dark. Piece of cake. Let's take, um, sharpen this one up a little bit so I can get a little bit closer to the... So then, there, see now it's a bit sharper. So you've got light, dark, light, dark. There you go. See how it makes it dimensional? A bit depth on that one again. So you get that darker pencil. And you kiss that line. Isn't that nice? And then you go through the leaves, and it will, it's such a, a cool thing to do. And then here, for example, let's have a look at the flowers. Let's just do the flowers. Let's just look at the shading. So this is going to be logically, it's going to be darker in there, isn't it? Around that, that area there. Right? So let's just do this. So that's pretty cool. And then we probably want to put a little bit of shade on that side as well. See, because the light will hit. Mm -hmm. So you've got dark in there, haven't you? See so how yeah, it's changing it? And then you could take that lighter grey just to break up that. S I'm no expert. I'm no expert. I. I got O level art and I didn't even get a good grade because <laughs> I set fire to my artwork, stupidly. Don't ask. But you just got to work it out, haven't you? You just got to work it out. Just play, you know, hours of play. I did um, I did some pottery yesterday for the first time in months. And um, I'm not sure, I've got to have a go and have another look. I'm not sure I've done it. I'm not sure I've done myself any favours. You know, when you do something, you think, oh, I never did that wrong. But it's a learning curve. You know, I, if you don't try, how are you ever going to figure out what's what's what, you know? And, um, and so I, I think I might have bodged a really nice piece. You know, me three Normans. I think I might have overcooked it with the oxides. But you know what? It's okay. It is what it is. Until I until I put it in the kiln, 
I will not know. I will not know. So it will go in the kiln and then we'll find out what I've done. Right, light, dark, light, dark. I think I'll go light, dark. Okay. And then dark along that edge there. What's the time? Is it 10 to 11 already? Well, I'll be. There you go. Nice. I like the leaves. And if you want to use colour on them, it's no different. You could, what I'm doing with grey, do it with green. See? It's quite good, this. Light dark. See, many of us have done this before in the shack, haven't we? Okay. This won't, you, many of you will be familiar with this old trick. There you go. There. Light dark. Light dark. Cool. Yeah. The thing about it is, it's so, it's so chill, isn't it, when you do this? When you're doing this, you're not thinking about anything other than what you're doing. That's the key, I think. You know, you're not you're not worrying about the blooming iron in and the shopping and the you know, just let it go, go with the flow. Hmm? Let's just be glad that we're we're here. Look at the cool bits in your life. Look at the good bits. Don't worry about what hasn't been achieved or what you haven't managed or what you think you can't do because it will cripple you that that negativity you know when you compare like i said earlier compare yourself with other people oh, it's a robber of joy you know? don't worry about it stay in your lane stay in your lane love that's the key there see the top half is so pretty isn't it you know there you go so you've got the different greys underneath and as you get if you want it to pop the more you the tighter you get in on that line art the more it'll pop there's one in here which is really brilliant it's uh, Payne's grey right Payne's grey dark 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 it's not black but it's it's as good as right, and that's the one. It's the last one when you when you when you really want to get that black, like proper depth in. That's when you reach for your Payne's grey and use it sparingly, but it will really make your work pop. See the difference as soon as you add a bit of Payne's grey, and that's where your ni -ni -ni nibs come in because. That's got a bit of red in it. I wonder if that will transfer. Well, that's not a bad thing either. Yay. Right. But you can use the nib then to to blend out that colour. That's what it does is it, it blends out the shade to give it smooth. If, it, if you feel you've you've got those, you've got too much of a line going, then the, the nib just breaks it up, smooths it out. Really good to do. There you go. Shadows. So, and these shadows that jump out, that are, are really a long way from the. That's that's what will make it look like wrought iron. Is if you take the shadow and you bring it right out like that. So, what I'm hoping to see, my friends, what I'm hoping to see in the not too distant future, on. Um, on Facebook, on, on Clarity Worldwide, is lots of beautiful, floral, twirly, wrought irony looking hearts. And if you don't feel you want to post, then don't. But if you do, I bet there'll be loads of people loving your artwork. So next week on Monday, the bus will leave the station again, the Shack bus, stay happy and creative. And I hope you can join me then. Uh, the day before that, on the Sunday, 3 to 5, 
I'm on telly. I don't think there's anything, I don't think there's any telly other than that. We're having a bit of a break. It take me that long to empty these blue bins. Um, I don't think Tina's on this week. Paul's not on. Although Paul is in the shack tomorrow with you with Groovy Tuesday. So I hope that you can join him then. And other than that, I, I hope that you enjoyed our, our hearty, our little hearty trip. I think, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of mileage in that. Lots of tricks and tips. And, um, and don't forget, it's, uh, it's your art. You are the artist, okay? And, uh, and don't let anyone tell you differently. Lots of love. I'll see you on Sunday. And if I don't see you then, I shall certainly see you on Monday. Nice to have your company. And thanks for all your help, Paul. Bye-bye now. Now let's see if I can switch this off.